got Joseph Sherman and I on a three-masted schooner from Twilling Gate Isle. I've been the world over, north, south, east, and west, but the middle of nowhere's where I likes it best. Where it's wave over wave, sea over bow, I'm as happy a man as the sea will allow. There's no other life for a sailor like me than to sail the salt sea, boys, to sail the sea. There's no other life but to sail the salt. Good morning. Good morning. Today is 1 February, the year 2015. I'm Dr. Dave Thompson, a volunteer at the Palm Springs Air Museum here in Palm Springs, California. As part of the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., we conduct interviews of veterans and civilians who participated in our country's military conflicts. Today, I'm here at the museum along with fellow volunteer Patrick Shannon, and today we have the honor and the privilege of hearing the story of Sub-Lieutenant uh, Patrick Shannon. Uh, Lieutenant Shannon uh, was a sea, a sea cadet in Canada uh, during the Cold War. So we're going to talk to him about that and a lot of other things. Patrick, good to have you here. Thank you. Okay, Patrick, um, tell me first, uh, would you first of all um, state and spell your full name? Uh, Patrick Shannon. Full name, Patrick Leo Shannon. Okay. Um, last name Shannon, S-H-A-N-N-O-N. And when and where were you born? April 23rd, 1941, Calgary, Alberta. And making you how many years young now? I'm heading towards 74 at the moment. Mm. Okay, been there. <laughs> been there, done that. <laughs> um, I was born in 39, so. Oh, good. Um, and your father, what was his name? Uh, Patrick Leo Shannon. Okay, and what did he do? He was spent his entire career in the automotive industry uh, as a uh, working in a dealership as an accountant, uh, business manager, and uh, later had his own dealerships, a series of dealerships himself. This was in Calgary? In Calgary and in Kelowna, British Columbia. Okay. Well, there was also one in Coleman, Alberta, yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> what, uh, what line of automobiles mainly? Um, first dealership was a Ford uh, dealership, and then a, uh, a GM dealership, uh, Pontiac Buick GMC mm -hmm. truck. I, I guess I've never thought about this, but uh, Canada did they ever produce any automobiles, or did they? Was it all American cars? Um, they had the. Initially, they produced Canadian versions of U.S. cars manufactured in, on, in Eastern Canada. And later, after the Free Trade Pact came along pre, uh, before NAFTA, um, the, some, you, oh, some cars, oh, some particular models were produced in Canada for distribution in North America, and others were produced in the United States for distribution in North America. But they never, you know. The, the they, they never, you know, uh, did a uh, uh, right, right. Uh, you know. Canadian <laughs> version. Can, in, never oh, invented. I mean, I mean, they never. It wasn't there. There was not the loon, the loony car, or right? Something there like was that. not a loony car, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, how did your uh, family, um, or how did your dad end up in Canada? Where did the uh, uh, or in the old country did they you know, come he, from? He, he was born and raised in Calgary, as was my mother. So. But how about his ancestors? Do you know anything about him? Um, I'd done some research. The family came over from Ireland around uh, in the middle of the 1800s. Potato famine, uh, probably. Time. Probably, and they came, um, they landed uh, in a guy named John Shannon, landed with his wife, uh, he wound up in Ontario, outside of Toronto, in a city called Marmara, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And they had, I'm not sure whether it was eight sons, or maybe it was 12 children, eight of whom, eight boys and four girls, but in any event, there were eight sons. 
and uh, there's a town very close to where they lived called Shannonville that's still there in Ontario. Mm -hmm. With eight sons, you could start your own city. <laughs> and um, three, in the early 1900s, three of those probably grandchildren of the initial ones moved, moved away. Uh, one went to uh, Minnesota, one went to uh, Washington, and one went to southern Alberta. And that I came descended from that branch oh, okay. of the family. Where Do you know where in Ireland they came from? Um, the family originated in the south of Ireland, um, along the west coast, southwestern Ireland. I'm not sure of the exact county. Um, they emigrated from a city in Northern Ireland uh, and came to Canada from there. Okay. And your mom, what was her name and her maiden name? Her maiden name was Steward. Um, there's some real interesting history there. Her, gra her grandfather, my great-grandfather, was named Buell and he grew up in um, was born and raised in Henry County, Illinois, and was a pacifist and left for Canada to avoid conscription in the Union Army. <laughs> Made life as a photographer, called himself Professor of Buell, and traveled, uh, you know, traveled all over taking photographs. Had very early days for photography. Taking photographs. This would be and making, uh, 1860s, 70s. Yeah, 1860s, mm -hmm. 70s, and, and uh, 80s. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he was commissioned by the Canadian Pacific Railway to photograph the building of the railway from the lakehead to the Rockies. There were other photographers involved in the project, but they had other sections. But he had the big section from the lakehead to the Rockies. Mm -hmm. And uh, Photographed, you know, many historical events, uh, and beautiful photographs of landscape in the in the Canadian Rockies. Have you seen any of those photographs? Oh yes. In fact, I have a, a room full of them. At, you did. At home. Oh. Uh, Could you? Um, I'll give you my uh, email address. Okay. Can you could you scan a couple of them or take photographs sure. and then scan them and email them to me? I'd like to add them into your story. Sure. Yeah. I already have some of them scanned. Oh, you did? Well, good. Including good. a picture of Buell himself. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, yeah, it's a great landscape oh, photography. Oh, yeah, I'd love to see that. Um, one, of, um, I, one of the first movies that I saw uh, when I was a kid that I just really loved that, I still remember it, it was so, it was in Technicolor, it just really, it was called Canadian Pacific. Uh, I don't know if you remember that movie or not, I think I probably have it here. Um, I think can't remember who, but it was it was kind of a western, but about the billing the Canadian Pacific oh, Railroad really? and stuff. Yeah, it was see. a Hollywood uh, movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can, I'll have to look and see if I have it here. I think Randolph Scott might have been in it, but I can't really remember for sure. Um, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. So, uh, but and the Sewards or Beatles and. Uh, do you know where in the old country they came from? They came from England or, or Scotland or somewhere? Um, I don't know. Uh, my father told me that Buell was a Pennsylvania Dutch. Mm -hmm. um, Which is German. <laughs> yeah. And, and I grew up, I, I was driving through, uh, driving across the United States and stopped for gas in Henry County, Illinois. Oh. and told the woman that my great-grandfather was from there in the gas station and she got out the phone book and there were no Buells listed so there was no, no reason to linger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. Yeah>, okay. <laughs> um, so, um, was your family very religious? Did you go to church a lot? Oh yes, yeah, Irish Catholic. Uh -huh. yeah. So, the, what was, uh, what, well, well let's, let's talk about it again. You were born in, what what's the town? Calgary. Calgary, yeah. yes. Okay, the Calgary Stampede. Huh? Yep. Big uh, part of my life. <laughs> I bet it was. Uh, Calgary is uh, much different than it was when you <laughs> were growing up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have no idea what the population was then, but it's over a million people now. Uh -huh. Oil country up there as well Oil as... Oil and uh, cattle. Yeah. Right. Main industries. And I've got 
friends from Western Canada, and they say it's totally different than Eastern Canada. Oh yes. Politically speaking, uh, yes. just about everything. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, politically, in particular, politically <laughs> speaking, the topography is different. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so then, when did he get into uh, working for the auto industry, and how did that come about? Um, I'm not sure um, of the details. I know that he had gone to a business college, and uh, when he graduated from that, he got a job uh, working for a car dealership in, in Calgary as, this a, was, as a bookkeeper. This was before you were born? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. You have any brothers and sisters? Three younger brothers, one of whom is deceased. And what, their names? Joseph uh, James, he died uh, three years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Daniel John, he's still alive. He's a en retired engineer. And uh, Michael, the young one, Michael Francis, who is um, uh, re now also retired. W uh, where do they live? All in Calgary. Mm -hmm. Calgary, yeah. okay. Um, now you were about four years old when the war, World War II ended. Yes. Do you have any recollection of World War II? Yes, I do. I have a vivid memory of being outside and hearing some explosions, and coming in and telling my mother that I could hear the guns from World, you know, from, the, from Europe, and uh, oh, you know, <laughs> it's eight thousand miles away. <laughs> so she humored me. Um, I remember my uncle coming back. Uh, he was in the Air Force, Royal Canadian Air Force. He survived a tour of duty as a tail gunner in a Lancaster bomber. Mm. And uh, he told us later that he was the only guy in his class to survive, in his gunnery class, to survive the war. And uh, they were shot down twice. That's to say they went down into the English Channel once and were picked up, and he also had to bail out once. Really? So he had... Uh, colorful career, but having made it through that in 1945, early 45, they sent him back to Canada for pilot training, promoted, gave him a promotion to pilot officer. Was uh, He qualified as a pilot in the Lancaster bomber, but um, the war ended before it was before he was ever shipped back. Did he stay in aviation after the war? No, but... <laughs> Thirty years to the day after his last logbook entry in the Air Force, he went back and took a flying lesson and uh, uh, became current again on his pilot's license. <laughs> <laughs> to the day. Yeah. So Calgary, did you uh, live in the same house most of the time when you were growing up? Mm, we had uh, two, houses, two houses. We moved uh, from downtown Calgary up to up to the western suburbs. Okay. And How old were you then? Um, I want to say about t 12. Okay. Um, do you remember the street that you lived on? Oh yes, 26th Street. Yeah. Okay. House is no longer there. It's now, it's now a uh, part of the light rail system. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you kids do for fun when you were growing up? Um, well, we played war a lot. I uh, went out with my brother, younger brother Joe, and we would explore around. We discovered a, a scrapyard that was full of fighters and bombers from World War II. Uh, all government surplus stuff that had, had you know, the, all the airplanes had the wings cut off of them. And, um, I, I was in a um, B-25 bomber and it had still had the 50 caliber machine guns in it, but they had all been disabled with the cutting torch. I managed to free the breech mechanism on one of the 50s. The good thing, I, there was no ammo lying around there, I would have tried to fire it. Um, but I, I remember playing for hours in that scrap yard, and we just had the thing to ourselves. Um, and uh, we'd go back again and again and again, and I'd sit and fighter uh, cockpits of various fighter airplanes and wow. pretend I was flying them. <laughs> That's quite a memory. That, was, yeah. uh, that is 
And later when I got my pilot's license after I retired, I remember one day a view of that flashed into my mind when I was at the end of the runway ready to <laughs> apply power and take off. I just went, I was just right back in that Spitfire uh, cockpit and yeah. pushed the throttle to the firewall and minutes later I was flying. It was <laughs> strange connection. But yeah. Oh gosh, that's great. Um, did you uh, do any hunting or fishing? Uh, Nope, nope. Um, never was either of those. Hockey? Uh, do you uh, <laughs> the sports much? Um, yeah, my my dad was a great athlete. Uh, he played uh, when he was growing up. He played uh, semi-professional baseball, semi-professional hockey, hmm. and um, um, I enjoyed baseball a little, but hockey was it was too cold. And <laughs> 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 Didn't like it. Um, the uh, where'd you go to grade school? Because you were living on a different. Right. When you started. Right? Yeah. A different. Um, uh, what street were you living on then? Thirteenth Avenue in, in Calgary, and I went to Sacred Heart um, School through grade six, and then we had moved. I guess after grade six, okay. that would make me about twelve. Then when we right. moved, and uh, uh, so were you an altar boy? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, no Latin stories. masses, right? Yeah, I, well, I grew up Catholic yeah, too, okay. and uh, still, so I know all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am quite like to think God you've been to the Yes, yeah. Right yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, do you remember the uh, what? Or you had nuns, I assume, uh, in, uh, in grade the, school. In grade school, yes. Not all my teachers were nuns, uh, but um, but yes, first first grade, uh, said Mother Rosemary. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, you remember? What order they were? They were Ursuline nuns. Yeah. And 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 what uh, what parish was that when you first started? Sacred Heart. Oh, that was Sacred Heart. Heart. Okay. Parish, yeah. So then, when we were twelve, you moved. So what parish did you go to then? Um, Saint Charles School, and uh, I forget the name of the parish. There, we didn't have our own parish. We went to another parish, the Holy Name Parish, uh -huh. but. The school didn't have a church, you mean? Or, or? Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and did you go uh, uh, straight to high school out of uh, out of grade school? Yes, um, but that was circuitous because my father had bought a dealership in Kelowna, British Columbia, and uh, what what dealership was that? A Ford dealership? That was the uh, the GM dealership, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he and a, a business, one of the guys he worked with bought the, bought the dealership. And uh, so we moved out to Kelowna. So I went to ninth grade in Kelowna, and then uh, 10 and part of 11, and then we came back to Calgary. So he sold the business and we oh, came back to Calgary. Yeah. Uh, so when you I came back to Calgary, um, did you come back to the same house that you lived in before? Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And so, then what high school was that you finished up at? St. Mary's High School. Okay. In, in Calgary. Calgary yep. um, did you have odd jobs when you were growing up? Did you work around uh, your dad's business? Yeah. yeah, I did both in Kelowna and back in, in Calgary. Um, did they repair automobiles there too? Mm -hmm. Did you? Is that where you did? That way you did work? No, in? I worked. Did, did ground work. They had me, had me pumping gas, and then I got a draw. Then they put put me in the, on the used car lot, washing cars, keeping the cars clean, mm -hmm. and weeding and stuff like that. And, um, you remember you, driving uh, a parts pickup truck? That was a cushy job. <laughs> Do you remember the first car? What car do you first remember your family had? Um, first one I really remember is Studebaker, Studebaker Champion, and uh, yeah. It was the first car you drove that parts truck? I guess, yeah. I mean, I had a license at that point, so yeah. <clears throat> do you remember the first your first car? Yes, I got one of my dad's used cars and another used car. <laughs> what what kind were they? Yeah. The first was a. 52 Plymouth uh, 
four-door sedan. Remember the color? Gray. And uh, then a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> 63, I think, Volkswagen Beetle Green. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, did you have any special girlfriends at high school? Uh, I married one, yes. Oh. Uh, so I guess she was special. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name? Joan. <laughs> and her maiden name? Rand. L-A. Rand, R-A-N-D. Rand. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, was, it, was that in Calgary or up in uh, British Columbia? That was in Calgary. Okay. What was her? Uh, what did her father do? He was a diesel mechanic at the Caterpillar dealership. Uh -huh. okay. um, and was she is uh, your same age? Yeah, a few weeks younger. Oh, okay. So we're in the same class. Same then. grade, yeah. <laughs> okay. Remember any of your favorite uh, teachers in high school? What was the name? Oh, yeah. It was St. Mary's, yes. Yeah, I remember Father O'Leary was a math teacher. It really inspired me when I went on to college. I studied uh, mathematics mm -hmm. as probably as a result of that. Okay. He kind of made me. He made me see how easy it was. Uh, and once you once you cross that threshold. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, when did you first start taking flying lessons? After I retired. Oh, so that yeah. not until a long time yeah, later. Long yeah, okay. Um, so what you 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 graduated in '59, I think you mm -hmm. said. Okay, and uh, then what? Um, I well, I working my way through college. I I went to university first time, a uh, full time first year, and then worked. The Where, what 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 university? University, what is now the University of Calgary. Different name that was University of Alberta at Calgary, but uh -huh. after the first year it became an independent university. Uh -huh. And uh, so then I got a job as a uh, computer programmer because mathematicians that's what they did is they went to work computer programmers. And I was uh, working with a team of engineers giving them computer support. I think you said that in high school you were a, a C Scout, which is mm -hmm. similar to our junior ROTC. Yeah. What year did you? When did you join that? Um, boy, I was. Uh, I think you had to be th thirteen to join, so I think it would have been thirteen. Yeah. Like your freshman, or yeah. Uh, yeah. So you went all, all, all through. Tell me yeah. about that. Huh? What? What's just. Well, one, one meeting a week, you got to wear a Navy uniform, and yeah. uh, one meeting a week, and you would learn all of the basic seamanship stuff that you could do in a classroom without being on a ship, because we were a long way from an ocean. And, um, and we had an opportunity in the summertime to go to camps, and um, we went, I went off to a uh, camp on the Pacific coast which was an old naval base, which they had taken over and used exclusively for training uh, sea cadets. And there had rifle ranges and uh, sailboats and a landing craft and uh, other. And did, you, did you like that? I loved it. Yeah. Oh, I just loved it. <laughs> I think you mentioned that also you went to Nova Scotia to a camp. Was that when you were in college? Or? Nope. That was also in some sea cadets be while I was in high school. I took a, the whole summer. Uh, was I was sent to uh, the Naval Air Station, and I spent a summer again because I was really interested in that um, at the Naval Air Station in Shearwater, Nova Scotia, just outside of Halifax. Mm -hmm. And they had that was an active naval base and. Um, what, what's, what's the name of it? Uh, Shearwater? Shearwater, uh, Nova Scotia. How you spell that? Sh uh, name of a bird, S Shearwater, S-H-E-A-R, water. Oh, okay. All one word, Shearwater. Okay. It's a seabird. Okay, so we're going to talk about you know, my life. So yeah. the early, early years, I'm going to mention an uncle who would 
who got me interested in aviation, though he didn't even try to do it, but he was... Well, we'll talk about that. Yeah. I'll prompt you, yeah. and uh, okay. so um, yeah. Yeah, you can talk about anything you want to. We've got yeah. plenty of time, yeah. and uh, uh, whatever is important to you and, and to us, uh, we'll find all that out. So we're recording. I'll flip this over. Come sit over here by you. Should I keep my hat on? You may. Yeah, whatever you like. That looks good. Good? Yeah, okay. Good morning. Good morning. Today is 1 February, the year 2015. I'm Dr. Dave Thompson, a volunteer at the Palm Springs Air Museum here in Palm Springs, California. As part of the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., we conduct interviews of veterans and civilians who participated in our country's military conflicts. Today, I'm here at the museum along with fellow volunteer Patrick Shannon. And today, we have the honor and the privilege of hearing the story of Sub-Lieutenant uh, Patrick Shannon. Uh, Lieutenant Shannon uh, was a sea, a sea cadet in Canada. Uh, during the Cold War. So we're going to talk to him about that and a lot of other things. Patrick, good to have you here. Thank you. Okay. Good to be here. And do you go uh, mainly by Patrick? Half and half. Uh, half my family calls me one, half the other. I'm kind of the same way. I'm David. My family calls me David and everybody else calls me Dave. So yeah. it's, it's kind of one of those things. So I don't know. Patrick's a nice, uh, nice Irish name. Nice Irish name. So they told me when I was in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would guess. <laughs> okay. All right. I suppose your family doesn't call you St. Patrick, though, do they? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, Patrick. Um, tell me first, uh, would you first of all um, state and spell your full name? Uh, Patrick Shannon. Full name? Patrick Leo Shannon. Okay. Um, last name Shannon, S H A N N O N. And when and where were you born? April 23rd, 1941, Calgary, Alberta. And making you how many years young? I'm heading towards 74 at the moment. Mm. Okay, been there. <laughs> been there, done that. <laughs> um, I was born in 39, so. Oh, good. Um, and your father, what was his name? Uh, Patrick Leo Shannon. Okay, and what did he do? He was spent his entire career in the automotive industry uh, as a uh, working in a dealership as an accountant, uh, business manager, and uh, later had his own dealerships, a series of dealerships himself. This was in Calgary. In Calgary and in Kelowna, British Columbia. Okay. Well, there was also one in Coleman, Alberta. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> what. Uh, what line of automobiles, mainly? Um, first dealership was a Ford uh, dealership, and then a, uh, a GM dealership, uh, Pontiac Buick GMC mm -hmm. truck. I, I guess I've never thought about this, but uh, Canada, did they ever produce any automobiles, or did they? was it all American cars? Um, they had the... Initially, they produced Canadian versions of U.S. cars manufactured in, on, in Eastern Canada. And later, after the Free Trade Pact came along, pre, um, before NAFTA, um, the, some, uh, some cars, uh, some particular models were produced in Canada for distribution in North America, and others were produced in the United States for distribution in North America. But they never, you know... The, the they, they never, you know, uh, did a uh, right, right. Uh, you know. Canadian <laughs> version. Can, in, never. Oh, I, mean, I mean, they never. It wasn't. There, there was not the loon, the loony car, or right? Something like there was that. not a loony car, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, sadly. <laughs> uh, and uh, how did your uh, family, um, or how did your dad end up in Canada? Where did the uh, uh, or in the old country did they you know, come he, from? He, he was born and raised in Calgary, as was my mother. So. But how about his ancestors? Do you know anything about him? Um, I'd done some research. The family came over from Ireland around uh, in the middle of the 1800s. Potato famine, uh, probably. Time. Probably, and they came, um, 
they landed uh, in a guy named John Shannon landed with his wife uh, and wound up in Ontario outside of Toronto in a city called Marmara, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And they had, I'm not sure whether it was eight sons or maybe it was 12 children, eight of them, eight boys and four girls, but in any event there were eight sons. And uh, there's a town very close to where they lived called Shannonville, that's still there in Ontario. <laughs> With eight sons, you could start your own city. <laughs> and um, three in the early 1900s, three of those probably grandchildren of the initial ones moved moved away. Uh, one went to uh, Minnesota, one went to uh, Washington, and one went to southern Alberta. And that I came descended from that branch oh, okay. of the family. Where Do you know where in Ireland they came from? Um, the family originated in the south of Ireland, um, along the west coast, southwestern Ireland. I'm not sure of the exact county. Um, they emigrated from a city in Northern Ireland uh, and came to Canada from there. Okay. And your mom, what was her name and her maiden name? Her maiden name was Steward. Um, there's some real interesting history there. Her, gra her grandfather, my great-grandfather, was named Buell and he grew up in um, was born and raised in Henry County, Illinois, and was a pacifist and left for Canada to avoid conscription of the Union Army. <laughs> Made life as a photographer, called himself Professor of Buell, and traveled, uh, you know, traveled all over taking photographs. Had very early days for photography. Taking photographs. This would be and making, uh, 1860s, 70s. Yeah, 1860s, mm -hmm. 70s, and, and uh, 80s. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he was commissioned by the Canadian Pacific Railway to photograph the building of the railway from the lakehead to the Rockies. There were other photographers involved in the project, but they had other sections. But he had the big section from the lakehead to the Rockies. Mm -hmm. And uh, Photographed, you know, many historical events uh, and beautiful photographs of landscape in the in the Canadian Rockies. Have you seen any of those photographs? Oh yes. In fact, I have a, a room full of them. At, you did. At home. Oh. Uh, Could you? Um, I'll give you my uh, email address. Okay. Can you could you scan a couple of them or take photographs sure. and then scan them and email them to me? I'd like to add them into your story. Sure. Yeah. I already have some of them scanned. Oh, you did? Well, good. Including good. a picture of Buell himself. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the, yeah, some great landscape oh, photography. Oh, yeah, I'd love to see that. Um, one, of, uh, I, one of the first movies that I saw uh, when I was a kid that I just really loved that, and I still remember it, it was so, it was in Technicolor, it just really, it was called Canadian Pacific. Uh, I don't know if you remember that movie or not. I think I probably have it here. Um, I think can't remember who, but it was it was kind of a western, but about the building, the Canadian Pacific oh, Railroad right. and stuff. Yeah, it was see. a Hollywood uh, movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can, I'll have to look and see if I have it here. I think Randolph Scott might have been in it, but I can't really remember for sure. Um, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. So, uh, but and the Sewards or Beals and. Uh, do you know where in the old country they came from? They came from England or, or Scotland or somewhere? Um, I don't know. Uh, my father told me that Buell was a Pennsylvania Dutch. Mm -hmm. um, Which is German. <laughs> yeah. And, and I grew up, I, I was driving through, uh, driving across the United States and stopped for gas in Henry County, Illinois. Oh. and told the woman that my great-grandfather was from there in the gas station and she got out the phone book and there were no Buells listed so there was no, no reason to linger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so, um, was your family very religious? Did you go to church a lot? Oh yes, yeah, Irish Catholic. Uh -huh. yeah. 
So the, what was so? It, well, well, let's let's talk about it again. You were born in what? What's the town? Calgary. Calgary. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The Calgary Stampede. Huh? Yep. Big uh, part of my life. <laughs> I bet it was. Uh, Calgary is uh, much different than it was when you <laughs> were growing oh, up. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have no idea what the population was then, but it's over a million people now. Uh, oil country yeah. up there as well. Oil as, and uh, cattle. Yeah. Uh, right. And I've got friends from Western Canada, and they say it's totally different than Eastern Canada. Oh yeah. Politically speaking, uh, yes. just about everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, politically, in particular, politically speaking, <laughs> the topography is different. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so then, when did he get into uh, working for the auto industry, and how did that come about? Um, I'm not sure. Of the details, I know that he had gone to a business college, and uh, when he graduated from that, he got a job uh, working for a car dealership in, in Calgary. As this a, was as a bookkeeper. This was before you were born. Oh yes. Uh -huh. You have any brothers and sisters? Three younger brothers, one of whom is deceased. And what are their names? Joseph uh, James. He died uh, three years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Daniel John, he's still alive, he's a en retired engineer, and uh, Michael, the young one, Michael Francis, who is um, uh, now also retired. W uh, where do they live? All Lake Calgary. Mm -hmm. Calgary, yeah. okay. Um, now you were about four years old when the wa World War II ended. Yes. Do you have any recollection of World War II? Yes, I do. I have a vivid memory of being outside and hearing some c explosions and coming in and telling my mother that I could hear the guns from world, you know, from, the, from Europe and uh, oh, you know, <laughs> 8,000 miles away. <laughs> so she humored me. Um, I remember my uncle coming back. Uh, he was in the Air Force, Royal Canadian Air Force. He, survived a tour of duty as a tail gunner in a Lancaster bomber. Mm. And uh, he told us later that he was the only guy in his class to survive, in his gunnery class, to survive the war. And uh, they were shot down twice, that's to say they went down into the English Channel once and were picked up, and he also had to bail out once. Really? So he had uh, a colorful career, but having made it through that, in 1945, early 45, they sent him back to Canada for pilot training. Promoted, gave him a promotion to pilot officer. Was uh, he qualified as a pilot in the Lancaster bomber? But um, the war ended before it was before he was ever shipped back. Did he stay in aviation after the war? No, but. <laughs> Thirty years to the day after his last logbook entry in the Air Force, he went back and took a flying lesson and uh, uh, became current again on his pilot's license. <laughs> <laughs> to the day. Yeah. So Calgary, did you uh, live in the same house most of the time when you were growing up? Mm, we had uh, two, houses, two houses. We moved uh, from downtown Calgary up to up to the western suburbs. Okay. And How old were you then? Um, I want to say about t 12. Okay. Um, do you remember the street that you lived on? Oh yes, 26th Street. Yep. Okay. House is no longer there. It's now, it's now a uh, part of the light rail system. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you kids do for fun when you were growing up? Um, well, we played war a lot. I uh, went out with my brother, younger brother Joe, and we would explore around. We discovered a, a scrapyard that was full of fighters and bombers from World War II. Uh, all government surplus stuff that had, had you know, the, all the airplanes had the wings cut off of them. And, um, I, I was in a um, B-25 bomber and it had still had the 50 caliber machine guns in it, but they had all been disabled with the cutting torch. I managed to free the breech mechanism on one of the 50s. The good thing, I, there was no ammo laying around there, I would have tried to fire it. 
Um, but I, I remember playing for hours in that scrap yard, and we just had the thing to ourselves. Um, and uh, we'd go back again and again and again. I'd sit in fighter uh, cockpits of various fighter airplanes and wow. pretend I was flying them. <laughs> That's quite a memory. That, was, yeah. uh, that is... And later when I got my pilot's license after I retired, I remember one day a view of that flashed into my mind when I was at the end of the runway ready to <laughs> apply power and take off. I just went, I was just right back in that Spitfire uh, cockpit and yeah. pushed the throttle to the firewall and minutes later I was flying. It was <laughs> a strange connection. But yeah. Oh, oh gosh. That's great. Um, did you uh, do any hunting or fishing? Uh? Nope, nope. Um, never was either of those. Hockey? Uh, do you uh, <laughs> into sports much? Um, yeah, my, my dad was a great athlete. Uh, he played, uh, when he was growing up, he played uh, semi-professional baseball and semi-professional hockey. Hmm. And um, um, I enjoyed baseball a little, but hockey was, it was too cold. And <laughs> 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 Didn't like it. Um, the uh, where'd you go to grade school? Because like, you were living on a different. Right. When you started. Right? Yeah. A different. Um, uh, what street were you living on then? Thirteenth Avenue in, in Calgary, and I went to Sacred Heart um, School through grade six, and then we had moved. I guess after grade six, okay. that would make me about twelve. Then when we right. moved, and uh, uh, so were you an altar boy? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, no Latin masses, right? Yeah, yeah, I grew up Catholic yeah, too, okay. and uh, still, so I know all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Adi am like Tifikat, you been to the Yes, that stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, do you remember the uh, what? Or you had nuns, I assume, uh, in, uh, in grade school. In grade school, yes. Not all my teachers were nuns, uh, but um, but yes, first first grade, uh, Mother Rosemary. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, you remember? What order they were? They were Ursuline nuns. Yeah. And 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 what uh, what parish was that when you first started? Sacred Heart. Oh, it was Sacred Heart. Heart. Okay. Parish, yeah. So then, when we were twelve, you moved. So what parish did you go to then? Um, Saint Charles School, and uh, I forget the name of the parish. There, we didn't have our own parish. We went to another parish, a Holy Name Parish, uh -huh. but. The school didn't have a church, you mean? Or, or? Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and did you go uh, uh, straight to high school out of uh, out of grade school? Yes, um, but that was circuitous because my father had bought a dealership in Kelowna, British Columbia, and uh, what what dealership was that? A Ford dealership? That was the uh, the GM dealership, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he and a, a business, one of the guys he worked with bought the, bought the dealership. And uh, so we moved out to Kelowna. So I went to ninth grade in Kelowna, and then uh, 10 and part of 11, and then we came back to Calgary. So he sold the business and we oh, came back to Calgary. Yeah. Uh, so when you I came back to Calgary, um, did you come back to the same house that you lived in before? Yep. Mm -hmm. oh. And so, then what high school was that you finished up at? St. Mary's High School. Okay. In, in Calgary. Calgary yep. um, did you have odd jobs when you were growing up? Did you work around uh, your dad's business? Yeah. yeah, I did both in Kelowna and back in, in Calgary. Um, did they repair automobiles there too? Mm -hmm. Did you? Is that where you did? That way you did work? No, in? I worked. Did, did ground work. They had me, had me pumping gas, and then I got a draw. Then they put put me in the, on the used car lot, washing cars, keeping the cars clean, mm -hmm. and weeding and stuff like that. And, um, you remember you, driving uh, a parts pickup truck? That was a cushy job. <laughs> do you remember the first car? What car do you first remember your family had? Um. First one I really remember is Studebaker, Studebaker Champion. 
and uh, yeah. It was the first car you drove that parts truck? I guess, yeah. I mean, I had a license at that point, so yeah. <clears throat> Do you remember the first, your first car? Yes, I got one of my dad's used cars and another used car. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind were they? The first was a 52 Plymouth uh, four-door sedan. Remember the color? Gray. And uh, then a Volkswagen Beetle. 63, I think, Volkswagen Beetle Green. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, did you have any special girlfriends in high school? Uh, I married one, yes. Oh, okay. uh, so I guess she was special. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name? Joan. <laughs> and her maiden name? Rand. L-A. Rand, R-A-N-D. Rand. Oh, okay. Yeah. And... Uh, was, it, was that in Calgary or up in uh, British Columbia? That was in Calgary. Yeah. What was her? Uh, what did her father do? He was a diesel mechanic at the Caterpillar dealership. Uh -huh. okay. um, and was she is uh, your same age? I yeah, you? a few weeks younger. Oh, okay. So we're in the same class. Same now. grade, yeah. <laughs> okay. Remember any of your favorite uh, teachers in high school? What was that name? Oh, yeah. It was St. Mary's, yes. Yeah, I remember Father O'Leary was a math teacher. It really inspired me when I went on to college. I studied uh, mathematics mm -hmm. as primarily as a result of that. Okay. He kind of made me. He made me see how easy it was. Uh, and once you once you cross that threshold. <laughs> yeah. okay. And um, when did you first start taking flying lessons? After I retired. Oh, so the, yeah. until a long time yeah, later. Long yeah, okay. Time. Um, so what you 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 graduated in '59, I think you mm -hmm. said. Okay, and uh, then what? Um, I well, I working my way through college. I I went to university first time, a uh, full time first year, and then worked. Where, on what, what what university? University, what is now the University of Calgary different name that was the University of Alberta at Calgary, but uh -huh. after the first year it became the, an independent university. Uh -huh. And uh, so then I got a job as a uh, computer programmer, because mathematicians, that's what they did, is they went to work computer programmers. And I was uh, working with a team of engineers, giving them computer support. I think you said that in high school you were a, a C Scout, which is mm -hmm. similar to our junior ROTC. Yeah. What year did you? When did you join that? Um, boy, I was. Uh, I think you had to be thirteen to join. So I think it would have been thirteen. Yeah. Like your freshman, or yeah. yeah. So you went all all, all through. Tell me yeah. about that. Huh? What what's just. Well, one, one meeting a week, you got to wear a Navy uniform, and yeah. uh, one meeting a week, and you would learn all of the basic seamanship stuff that you could do in a classroom without being on a ship, because we were a long way from an ocean. And, um, and we had an opportunity in the summertime to go to camps, and um, we went, I went off to a camp on the Pacific coast which was an old naval base, which they had taken over and used exclusively for training uh, sea cadets. And there had rifle ranges and uh, sailboats and a landing craft and uh, other. And did, did you like that? I loved it. Yeah. Oh, I just loved it. <laughs> I think you mentioned that also you went to Nova Scotia to a camp. Was that when you were in college? Or? Nope. That was also in some sea cadets be, while I was in high school. I took a, the whole summer, uh, was, I was sent to uh, the Naval Air Station and I spent a summer again because I was really interested in that um, at the Naval Air Station in Shearwater, Nova Scotia, just outside of Halifax. Mm -hmm. And they had, that was an active naval base and um, what, what's, what's the name of it? Uh, Shearwater? Shearwater, uh, Nova Scotia. How you spell that? Uh, name of a bird, S Shearwater, S-H-E-A-R, water, oh, okay. all one word, Shearwater. Mm -hmm. It's a seabird. Uh -huh. And um, 
I what kind of planes did they have there? They had uh, F2H Banshees, uh, S2F trackers, mm -hmm. uh, helicopter, a couple different helicopters. I wasn't interested in helicopters. <laughs> did you get Still up, Did you get up in any of them? I got the. Oh, and they also had um, TBM Avengers. I got to ride in a TBM Avenger. Oh, in the back seat, in the uh, observer's position. There's three the pilot position, the observer's position, and the torpedo. Right. You've seen ours downstairs, I'm sure. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it brought back some memories, I guess. Huge airplane. Oh, it is. I forgot yeah. how big they were. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So, um, had that you was, had. That was my very first flight, was in an Avenger. Oh, for the first right? time I was off the ground. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was there. Um, had you had any thoughts of going into the uh, joining the service? Very much. I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to get into um, a training program they called the Venture Plan in Canada, which uh, was a, a three-year track in aviation, um, two years of uh, college at a, a naval school, uh, followed by a year at, or some time at Pensacola, Florida, being trained by the U.S. Navy, and. and for flight school, <coughs> and then uh, assigned to the fleet, and um, that's what I wanted to do until I found out I had my eyesight wasn't good enough. Oh. So that was my second disappointment in life. My first was finding out I was allergic to horses and couldn't be a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so by Calgary, you can't be a cowboy. Yeah. Actually, that <coughs> is. <laughs> By the way, um, when you're growing up, uh, do you remember the neighborhood movie theaters you used to go oh, to? Oh, yeah. What were their names? Do you remember? Um, uh, God, I can see the place. I think it was called the Kinema, like cinema spelled with a K, the oh, Kinema. Uh -huh. Tiny little theater. Yeah. I'd go Saturday afternoons and watch black and white movies and Hoplon Cassidy and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it cost you how much to get in? I had 10 or 15 cents, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. I've got the same memories myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was fun. Um, the neighborhood that you lived in, was it uh, all different kind of people lived in it, or what was it? No, it was uh, not, not ethn ethnically diverse in any way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was houses that had been built in, you know, between the wars, uh, two-story uh, frame structures. Yeah. Uh, How did you handle the cold? I hated the cold. I really did. Uh, you know, my mother dressed us up well and sent us off to school in the morning. We had to walk about a block and a half to school. Uh -huh. um, How cold would it get sometimes? It would get, um, in the wintertime, there'd be some days where it would be down around 30 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. And, uh, you know, it, but Calgary is strange in that um, the weather is quite variable, and some days in the winter it would be the warmest city in Canada. Temperature mm -hmm. might be up around uh, 60 degrees, yeah. and, and then a week later it'd be back, back down below zero. Okay. Um, Much snow? Uh, snow would come and go, like it does in Denver, you know. They, mm -hmm. There's a, uh, a truism that you don't get old snow, new snow on top of old snow there, and so it would wax and wane most of the winter. What about the wind? Um, the, if the wind was out of the north, it was brutal and cold and 40 below zero. If the wind was out of the west, it was likely to be warm, a Chinook wind. Mm -hmm. And uh, pretty flat country there? Kind of well, in the foothills of the Rockies, so on one side of the city is the prairie and the other side of the city is the mountains, the foothills of the mountains. Uh -huh. Okay, so in, did you get married while you were in college? Yes. Okay. Um, and your wife, was she going to, did she go to college too? No. Okay. And how many children did you guys have? Three girls. Three girls. And what are their names? Uh, Deborah is the oldest, uh, Diana the uh, next, and Susan the youngest. And uh, any grandchildren? Um, three grandchildren there. Mm -hmm. And where did they all live, the girls? 
Um, two of the girls live in Victoria, British Columbia, and one is in Alberta, Lethbridge, Alberta. The youngest, Susan, is in Lethbridge, Alberta. Okay, um, okay so now you're, uh, you're working part-time. Where were you working, did you say, when you were going to college? I, I was working at the Oil and Gas Conservation Board. Uh, Doing what? That's the pro computer programmer. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, had you, <coughs> well, computers were just kind of early on, right. more or less. So, how did you get into that? Um, that's a darn good question. I was. How did I get into that? There were very few computers in the city, and they're all owned by the oil companies there. Um, and uh, there was one at the university, and that was in the math department. Funnily enough, there's no computer sciences department at the time. So I think I heard about a, a job where they were looking, a job opportunity where they were looking for a uh, programmer assistant, assistant programmer, uh, to oil and gas conservation board, and I applied for it and got it. Yeah. So what did those computers look like then? Um, the one, the one that we had there was called an LGP30 computer, made by a company called Libriscope, and um, vacuum tubes, um, a long console about the size of a big desk, low like that, with a teletype at one end of it, where the operator would uh, make it do things. It had a the memory, 32 kilobytes of memory. <laughs> storage, storage on the thing. And that was for program and data, <coughs> 32 kilobytes. And uh, it, it was used for uh, scientific engineering work. So typically what would happen is a, an engineer would bring me a paper uh, out of some journal, American Petroleum Institute or something like that. And he'd say, can you give us a program that does this? And so I'd read the paper and and uh, figure out how to do the calculations and then create a program and, and work with the guy on making it do what he wanted it to do. Yeah. And that was, uh, I did the, with, on that team with a, a team of geologists there, I did the very first reserve study, or we did the very first reserve study of the, of the oil sands. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Up in Alberta. Now, did it have a monitor with it? I mean, could you see no. what you were doing? No. <laughs> no, it was all uh, printer uh, printer output, and not punch card kind of things, or not. Nope. Uh, well, I guess that's what they call them. Uh, yeah. So in paper, the input was on paper tape, mm -hmm. and uh, programs would be on paper tape. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how did you like that? Well, I enjoyed it. I stayed in that business, retired from Microsoft, so I guess oh, yeah. I, you know, oh, okay. so I, All right. well, I spent my entire career in information technology one way or the other. Okay. Um, so did you finally graduate then from college? Yes. What year did you graduate? 64. Okay. And then what? And then we, uh, I got a job, uh, Honeywell was starting up a computer division, and I got a job selling computers for Honeywell in Western Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, so I had some technical background. I found that I wor enjoyed working with people more than I enjoyed working with computers. But the technical background served me well, because I knew what I was selling. Yeah. <laughs> and so you had to do a lot of traveling? Uh, initially, I did around Western Canada and became a very quite successful selling, uh, selling computers. So where were you living in those days? Initially in Calgary, but they moved me out to Vancouver uh, after a couple of years and I um, wound up as the branch manager in Vancouver. A little temp more temperate climate there, right? More temperate. Did you like that better? Yeah, like the temperate climate a lot better. <laughs> Still wasn't warm enough for me, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where did you... Uh, what street did you live on there? I lived in North Vancouver on Melbourne Avenue when we first arrived. Okay. Um, and the girls were they all born by this time? Oh yeah, they were all uh, they were all born by then and went off to school. And where did they go to school? Or did you have a parish there that you went to? When you no, in public school, just mm -hmm. up the, not too far away, uh -huh. uh, a few blocks up the hill. 
Okay. Okay. So, and that would have been what years? Uh, I was there from, uh, I think, 66 until uh, early 70s. What street did you live on there? Mel Melbourne Avenue. Melbourne yeah. Avenue, okay. Um, now, Victoria is pretty close to there, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a really pretty place, I bet. Um, Emperor, the Empress Hotel, I think. Mm -hmm. you know, they had yeah. high tea there one time or something. Scones. Oh, good. Yeah. Spend a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Half a scone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so. And then, uh, then what? After they they trans. By the way, did you have uh, uh, any hobbies, any interests that uh, outside of work in those days? I I took up golf. Um, uh, you know, play golf. Played some golf. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I found that it, the problem with golf is that it took too darn much time, uh, particularly if you're working. You know, you yeah. Uh, you got to go it's all Saturday. You're away from the family, and, and so I wrestled with that. Um, skiing became a ski bum. Managed to break my uh, ski bum. I, I really enjoyed skiing a lot. Um, managed to break uh, two legs, you know, two separate incidents, a couple of years apart, mm -hmm. which dampened my, dampened my enthusiasm <laughs> for skiing. I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> where 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 would you skate? Uh, typically at Whistler. When that was all in Vancouver, and I would go up to Whistler to ski most mm -hmm. often. Yeah. Did the girls ski too? Um, yes, and um, Diana became quite an accomplished skier and a ski instructor, mm -hmm. ski patrol. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, ski patrol. And my wife became a ski instructor. Oh, okay. Um, did your wife work too, or did you? Uh, no, just yeah. Other than skid, skid, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, did you? Um, okay. So when you left, where'd you go when you left Vancouver? Then? I was transferred to Toronto by Honeywell. And, uh, I was kicked upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I became the national sales manager for that computer really? division for Honeywell. Mm. How many people under you? Uh, as lofty as the title sounded, it was a staff position. My job was uh, planning, uh, strategic planning, and, um, of how to basically how to integrate our you know, merger with General Electric and uh, distribute the General Electric computers oh. that we had suddenly acquired to sell. I see. And that would have been what year? Um, Early seventies. That's all. I'm not sure. PCs hadn't come along yet. Yeah, had still a long way. Still mainframe stuff. Yep, still mainframe stuff. Mm -hmm. But much different than when you first started. Yes, yes. Every year was. Um, Just you know, more memory, more storage, that yep, mainly, or yep. other stuff too. And yeah, and, and lower prices and lower priced models. So we, could, the prices of those computers were coming down, and we. You know, we were getting close to a hundred thousand dollars for a computer, going down to a hundred thousand dollars. I think the first one I sold was close to a million. Um, so clearly, not everybody could buy one of those. But at a hundred thousand dollars, all kinds of people could buy them. Businesses could buy them. No individuals. Right. How did you like Toronto? You're back where it's I didn't, I didn't like, yeah, it's cold. I didn't like Toronto. I never felt that I fit in there very, very mm. much. Um, Toronto, what's the population there? Uh, well, it was two and a half million when I was there. So a big, big city. Big, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, it was not my favorite place. How long were you there then? About three years, and uh, I, I left Honeywell and moved back to uh, Vancouver. <laughs> And uh, joined a consulting company there, a computer consulting company. Worked at that for a few years. Mm -hmm. And then I was hired uh, by a company and it moved back to Toronto. <laughs> there I was again. <clears throat> what company was that? That was a Canadian company, like the, the loony, if you like. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, and it was uh, called Consolidated Computer Company, Three C's. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was that company that uh, asked me at one point if I would like to take over as the sales manager in the U.S. for for them. Mm -hmm. I'd been there about three years, and they. Um, we were doing quite well in Canada, not nearly as well in the U.S. And so they asked me if I'd like to take over the U.S. sales management role, and they moved me to uh, Waltham, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. uh, on an L-1 visa. What what is that? That's for intercompany transferees. Okay. And uh, so, it took ten days and ten dollars to get the visa. It's, it's really really simple. Is, the, is that different than a green card? It, yeah, it's different. It, you you can work, but you, your spouse can't work. That's one big difference. Uh, I, guess, I guess she would need her own green card. Green. She had an L2 visa, she, so she couldn't work. She could live in the United States, couldn't work. Um, but it was also tied to your employment. If you lost your job, just get out of the country. <laughs> you couldn't use that with another. You couldn't use that visa to work for another company. And uh, so after we got to uh, uh, Massachusetts, we uh, figured that that was a, an undesirable position to be in because the company was a little fragile at that point. And so we applied for and got a green card about a year later, mm -hmm. uh, both of us, you know, the whole family. So. Oh, yeah. And uh, then I, I got, were you at this point thinking that uh, you were going to make the U.S. your home? Yes, we did. We, we loved it. We loved living in the Boston area. I love history and I couldn't get over the history in Boston. It was, I would, visitors would come and I would take them and show them all of the, the sites on the Freedom Trail. And I effectively became an informal docent <laughs> on the Freedom Trail. I knew where all the battles were fought. I stood on mm. Um, I stood on Lexington Green, where the first battle of the Revolutionary War was fought. I uh, stood uh, at the uh, Old North Bridge in Concord, where the second battle was fought. I think it was called the Old, maybe it was just the Old Bridge in Concord, mm -hmm. the second battle. I, I noted that both battles were fought in front of taverns. <laughs> and, <coughs> I imagine myself as a militiaman. I'm, I'm assuming that there were less than a hundred people, a hundred soldiers in the, those battles. I mean, there were just a few on each yes, side. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, but it still would have been really scary if you were a far, oh, yeah. a militiaman, a Minuteman. Yeah. You're really a farmer with who exactly. owned a rifle. Right. And uh, so you would. There, I, I think I would go to the tavern and get myself a drink to fortify my courage. <laughs> it's inter so when you were growing up in Canada and going to school and stuff, did you get much U.S. history up there? Um, not much. Uh, we concentrated on Western Canadian history, really. Um, mm -hmm. The building of the railroad and the treaties with the Indians. and uh, you know, Certainly we knew about that, but you know, but buildings that were built in 1920 were being preserved as historic sites in Calgary. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was a when I lived in Massachusetts, there was a house in a, the town we lived in that was 300 years old, <laughs> different scale. So, Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the Western Can Canadian history then. Um, Indian tribes around where you were. Uh, do you remember the names of them? Uh, they've changed all the names now. Uh, but um, the, we called them the Sarsi then. Uh, I guess that was the white man's name for them. Now we're using the Indian name that is unpronounceable mm -hmm. <clears throat> to me, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Did, were they on reservations? Too? Yep, reservations, not unlike uh, in the U.S. Um, did any of them go to school with you? Did, did they come off the uh, reservation much? Um, or did you know any of um, them? Um, it turns out, yes, but I didn't know they were Indians at the time. They were just kids. Yeah. Mm. They didn't make, they didn't wear a badge. <laughs> didn't wear a headdress. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Had there been, um, 
uh, were there Indian wars up in Western Canada like they were in the Western United States back in those days? No, uh, there was something similar. There was um, there were a large number of people who were half breeds. They called themselves the Métis, and they were the product of uh, French trappers and Indian women. Uh, the children of the offspring of French trappers who married Indian women, <coughs> and um, and there was a, a rebellion uh, in uh, Western Canada, you know, Saskatchewan and Manitoba, where uh, a guy named Louis Riel led a, a rebellion against Canadian government to try to establish an independent nation for the Métis in Western Canada. And uh, that was put down uh, by force. So the Canadian uh, Canada shipped out uh, uh, regular troops and militia to fight uh, Riel and his men. And the railroad had just been built, and one of some of the one of the pictures and a couple of pictures that I have that my grandfather, great grandfather, took were of troops being shipped, oh, yeah? uh, staged, you know, mustered on board trains and shipped yeah. on the railroad huh. to put down the rebellion. Yeah, I'd like to see one of those pictures. Yeah. And um, so yes, there was there was the the violence there, but and the uh, different the uh, <laughs> the Mounties. Uh, Oh, were they, I, I assume they were still around when you were there, I guess they're they still are. They're now. Yeah, now. <laughs> they're, they're now. Um, My favorite uh, radio show, and later became a TV show, was Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Yes, yeah. Yukon King. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, all those places that he went, Whitehorse, Dawson, uh, yeah. stuff, places like that. My daughter, uh, went for her 40th birthday, I took her on a... She, she wanted to go uh, on a cruise up to Alaska, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and so, so there was some places that you could stop, and there were a couple. Of, and I saw one; it, it was Skagway. I said, well, "I want to stop there because that's yeah. where Sergeant Preston King used to go to Skagway a lot. I want to sure. see what that's like." So. Skagway, and from there the Chilkoot Trail, yeah. up the mountain over we to the, the Yukon. We took the the train up that uh, okay. up that you know, and saw it. It was interesting, uh, and the history of that, uh, you, I'm sure that you know, is that, uh, they were, of course, they were miners, so they were going up there looking for gold, um, but you couldn't cross, and I guess, is there a border where you cross into Canada? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but you couldn't come across unless you had, like, a, I don't know, a hundred dollars worth of stuff, you know, yeah. so, they, so they wouldn't have to take care of you. And so some, and to get that up that big hill, you had to carry a lot of provisions. That was that was pretty hard. So oh, sometimes yeah. they'd have to piecemeal and take some up, get some more, take some more, and, and then yeah. get it to go across. It was really quite interesting. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. The guys who made the money were the ones who sold them the materials, <laughs> <laughs> the supplies that they made. Yeah. <laughs> they I made think. more money than most of the miners. And Skagway is still just a little. Yeah. How many? Less than a hundred houses, I think, in there. Just, yeah, uh, we got. Really I went on that cruise up. Did there. you? Got yeah. off ship and walked around no, the streets. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Back on. Yeah, but it's. Um, I saw my first badger. <laughs> we yeah. were out going up on that train up there. I could yeah. See. Um, yeah, that was interesting. So tell me, so the Mounties, they are like. Well, I, I think of it like the Texas Rangers, but I guess it's different than that. Well, well they're a police force. Um, they're a police force in the, nor in the Northwest Territories. They used to be called the Northwest Mounted Police. Mm -hmm. And um, they wanted to establish law and order in the West Western Territory, the Northwest Territories, which is now... They don't, they don't have them back east? The mountains, uh, the, well, they do now. It's, okay. it's, it, it's evolved beyond that to become the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, which is now a federal uh, law enforcement organization. Okay. And, uh, and in fact, they are under contract. The Mounties provide uh, provincial police services in most of the western provinces. Mm -hmm. Yes, in all four western provinces. Mm -hmm. um, so they are the Mounties of the provincial police in British Columbia, but that's under contract, like like the sheriff's department here provides under contract 
Palm Desert with the police oh, okay. services. The Mounties provide the problems of British Columbia with police, and the problems of Alberta, and the problems of Saskatchewan. Now, in, in, in Calgary, did they have a city police force yes. separate from the, from the yeah. Royal Canadian Mounties? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so you're in Massachusetts and got your green card now, and uh, were there many, uh, was it pretty much all Canadians? Uh, working at that company, or were there Americans working there? No, too? I was the only Canadian working oh. there in, in the U.S. operation. I see. Yeah, um, yeah all of, everybody else were. were you know, it's basically sales, 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 uh, sales, customer support is okay. what we did. We had uh, there was one guy ran the maintenance operations, uh, and one guy, myself, the sales and marketing operations. And who were your competitors in those days? Oh, it was a company called Entrex. Um, I think they were based in Mass. Yeah, they were based in Massachusetts. Um, they were probably our our nemesis. Um, <clears throat> uh, there are a couple of others as well, but um, would run into them much less frequently. Would run into Entrex all the time. And what did they sell? Did they have their own computer? It was all, it was all, this was uh, data entry systems uh, used by people who had lots of data to uh, get into, into the computer system. So these were all computer-based uh, data entry systems. So typically sold to insurance companies. Uh, we had all kinds of, a lot of the states, in state income tax departments would take your income tax return and these operators using our stuff would enter the data. Mm -hmm. um, now your accountant does that and transmits it to <coughs> but, mm. So how long were you at that company? Um, four or five years. What street did you, where did you live? In Waltham you say? Is that how well the company was in Waltham. I, we lived, uh, we started off in uh, Newton, Massachusetts, 25 Day Street, Newton, Massachusetts, right on the, uh, just around the corner from the Boston Marathon route. Oh. <clears throat> uh, did you get to Cape Cod much? A few times. Rented a, rented a uh, cottage there one summer. Oh. Yeah, it's really pretty there. Yeah. yeah it's nice. And my wife and uh, the kids went down to the Cape and I came on weekends and get away from work about noon on Friday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Drive back Monday morning. Still a little chilly there though, right? In Boston. The winters, yes, the winters could be cold, but uh, the summer on the Cape was oh, yeah. was no. just magical. It was it one was, of the I best. was there in September. I yeah. uh, went to Newport, Rhode Island for my orientation for uh, the Navy one uh, September and uh, Got to, I met some guys from the East Coast and went up to Cape Cod with them. That was really fun yeah. on weekends. Yeah. So, um, so you stayed with that company for how long? Well, I, th I think about four years. And then what? And um, and then what? I went joined a software company um, in Massachusetts called Software International Corporation got into the software business. And that was what year, huh? Oh, in late 70s, <laughs> that's about all I can tell you now. Yeah, okay. And, um, and what was the software like then? It was business accounting software for mainframes. Um, mm -hmm. We had uh, four or five different application, five different application packages. Mm -hmm. And my job was uh, sales and vice president of sales and marketing for that company and um, if you went to a, a business and they're buying one of these things uh, mm -hmm. computer and the software for the first time how long typically would it take to get them set up uh, once they once they purchase the software uh, I think usually about three months uh, you know, quick if you're the more you're implementing the longer it might take but if you start with a you probably have your first package up and running it within three months and most of that is systems integration issues trying to enter to get the data that they're getting in now getting now gathering now invoices and 
accounts payable and get those things into into the computer system and build the master files. I, I had a Dell office here for years and I remember the first time we did, did that we got kind of a mainframe kind of a thing and I remember it took the girls forever to get everything yeah. you know, into it. And of course you plus you got other every day you got more right. new stuff coming in. So yeah, it's it can be a chore. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, so how okay, so how long did you stay in Massachusetts? Um well, I was in the uh, I think a total of twelve years in the Boston area. Yeah. Did you get into sailing and stuff like that, water sports? Oh yes, yeah. Did uh, that was another thing I did in Vancouver. Incidentally, was we oh. I had a friend with a sailboat. Never owned a boat, I, but I chose my friends carefully. <laughs> yeah, okay. And um, so I did a lot of sailing out in uh, in Vancouver. But also um, because of that, uh, I offered to crew for people, uh, friends who had sailboats, mm. and I had a, a neighbor who kept a boat in Marblehead in the winter time and took it down to the Cape every summer. So I helped them take the boat down and uh -huh. uh, went sailing with them when we were in Cape Cod. <clears throat> what kind of boat was that? Uh, so, uh, uh, I can't remember the make, but it was uh, about a 30-foot sailboat mm -hmm. sloop. How many uh, crew, how many on your crew? There'd be just two couples, just typically. Uh, that was nice, yeah. <laughs> Did a little bit of racing. I uh, didn't enjoy it. I figured I got enough competition from Monday to Friday every week <laughs> without doing it on the weekends. So were the girls still at home when you were in Massachusetts? Or were um, they, uh, the oh. youngest was. Uh, the, actually, the youngest two were. Mm -hmm. Did they go to college? Uh, or did they go to school around there? Um, yes, they both were in school in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, one in elementary school, one in high school. Mm -hmm. And um, then the uh, youngest one decided she wanted to go back to British Columbia to be with her sisters when she graduated from high school. And she's going to go to school there. And um, the, uh, I would say the youngest, the old, the, the old, the oldest one remaining behind, Susan. Susan moved back to British Columbia. Your and youngest was living back there. Well, uh, she was. I had two with us in Massachusetts: Susan, yeah, who, and uh, Virginia. Were they? Yeah, but you said, and and when the, when Diana was it? The, oh, Di Diana, uh, Diana and Debbie were out of the house. Um, Okay. Uh, Diana was in uh, going to in, in university. At the so university. your kid. Okay. Name off your kids again. There was Deborah, Diana, and Susan, and then by another marriage, Virginia. Okay. All right. Okay. So Virginia. Okay. So that would be your second wife. Then yes. Had, and what was her name? That was uh, my wife's name. Yeah. Marie. Marie, Marie. McKnight. McKnight. And uh, where did you meet her? Uh, at Honeywell. Okay. And where, where did she grow up? She grew up in Toronto. She was born in Glasgow, Scotland. Oh, she was. Her parents were Scottish. Scottish, yeah. Her Scottish. father was in the Royal Navy in the Pacific in World War II. Yes. And, um, what did he What did he do when he got out? He's an electrician in the Navy and uh, was uh, worked uh, for an elevator company, servicing elevators. And how, why did they come to Toronto? Or how did they end up there? Um, he, I'm a little unclear on that. <laughs> okay. um, but uh, yes, a little unclear on that whole okay. story. But he uh, he he maintained close ties uh, with his family in Scotland. Mm -hmm. You know, his brothers and sisters, or his sisters anyway, and. Um, her mother, uh, also from Scotland, um, all of her family moved to Canada. So mm -hmm. there were these one one family was all in Scotland, the other one was all in. Do you remember Toronto. what part of Scotland they all came from? Um, well, her, her mother, her her father came from uh, a little town called Kirkconnell, which is not far from Edinburgh. 
By the way, you mentioned that you've been to Ireland. Have you been to Scotland as well? When you yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did you go around to the places where they were from? You we, thought we sp we stayed. No, we didn't do that in Scotland. We certainly did that in Ireland. Um, in Scotland, uh, we uh, stayed with uh, aunt and uncle. Yeah. Yep. And uh, my wife's aunt and uncle. Yeah. Yeah, he was a World War One veteran who had lost his arm in World War One. He always so yeah, and had some. Should, too bad you didn't have the camera. You could get some so good yeah. stories back there. Yeah, long yeah, long uh, <laughs> yeah, long ago. He's gone, long gone. Yeah. Um, okay, so and uh, Virginia is the. Daughter, yes, uh, or your your wife's daughter. And so, what does Virginia do? Uh, Virginia is a magazine editor. Lives in New York City. Does she have children? Yes, one. Okay. Iris, three years old. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So okay now, okay we're back to uh, in Massachusetts. Um, by the way, had you ever come to Southern California uh, by this time? I had. Been in Southern California on business um, a number of times, but never uh, had never lived here. Yeah. Okay. By the way, uh, the, did you do much traveling uh, when you were working? I mean, other than I mean, for pleasure. Oh, um, for pleasure. Um, I mean, you take vacations and stuff, and do any travel? Oh yes. Yeah. Um, like where would you go, or where were some of the ones you remember the most? Well, very often when we lived in Massachusetts, very often what we would do was go to travel to see family in Canada, or uh, in the wintertime we well once we went to Bermuda, once we went to Florida, taking uh, the kids to Disney World, uh, uh, also to California, Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it sounded like you, you did, did you do some traveling uh, in oh, your business? Oh, too? yes. Tons of traveling everywhere. Not just the Northeast? Not just the Northeast, all over the country. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, we were in, uh, I came to, went to Seattle often. We acquired a company in Seattle and I was in charge of integrating. They put me in charge of running that. Or supervising that from the, from Boston, and so I was in Seattle every couple of weeks, mm -hmm. two or three weeks, something like that, usually for a whole week. And um, we had uh, I had uh, you know worked with a, a sales manager in Southern California, sales managers around the country, and I, we had a regional office in. Um, San Diego. And what San was the name of that software? Software International. software International. So we had a regional office in um, uh, San Diego. I would get out to that several times a year. Regional. But never to Palm Springs? Um, I had been to Palm Springs. We had a couple of times I was here in a conference, conventions. Uh, mm -hmm. And then once I decided to host a conference here. So, yes, when, when, several times. When, when was that? 80s, all I can see. Do you remember where you had it? One of the hotels um, or something? We had, it at a, we had it at A Marriott, is all I can, I can't even tell you where it was, but it was, wasn't the big J. No, it was probably Marriott. the one uh, on Bob Hope yeah, down there. Probably yeah, probably was. I think that's the only one that was yeah. here early on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I uh, enjoyed that. I loved the desert. I was, um, I loved, finally it was warm. <laughs> I'm, I'm a lizard by nature. Mm -hmm. yeah, me too. <laughs> and um, I, one of the things that really struck me was the visibility. You can get up on top of a hill here and see for a hundred miles. And up in the northwest, even on a clear day, you can't do that because of the humidity in the air. Yeah. And the, if you don't get uh, that kind of visibility, very, very often, mm -hmm. whereas here it's kind of a daily occurrence. Right. Yeah. Now, it sounded like we were talking before, did you end up with Microsoft? By acquisition, like, 
by way of acquisition, I ended up with Microsoft. Okay. That is to say, I worked for a, I had a, I became president of a company in uh, Santa Clara, California, a software company. What was the name of that? Uh, Smith, Dennis, and Gaylord was the name of the company. And uh, we, um, we had, they had, not, not, I wasn't part of it at that time, they had developed world-class expertise in project management, developing systems to help manage projects, world-class expertise. And um, so we uh, built a product that uh, did project accounting and project management, but to work, and we designed it to work with another accounting company's products. So they made no suite of accounting systems, payroll and accounts payable and accounts receivable and all of the things that a small business would need. And if uh, and we dov dovetailed our project management software to fit exactly what they did mm -hmm. so that the user wouldn't be aware that a different company had made the product, made that module of the product. And uh, we became a runaway success. And the company that we worked with uh, was back in Ohio, Findlay, Ohio, so, uh, called Solomon Software. They had an award-winning accounting system that lacked a good project management component. Mm -hmm. We filled that need. It really helped Solomon become successful. And, uh, and they acquired us, to, really to prevent us from being, prevent us from doing what we did for them with another software company. They were afraid that we would go do that with Great Plains, their arch enemy. <laughs> and, um, and in fact, we were talking to Great Plains. Well, we were snooping around. Great Plains was snooping around us because they were losing to Solomon because of their project management system. So uh, Solomon, as a defensive manager, acquired us. About a year later, they made me, I was in Santa Clara, California, and they made me an offer I couldn't refuse to go back and take over sales and marketing in Findlay, Ohio, for the company. What part of Ohio is that in? Findlay is in northwestern Ohio, 50 miles from Toledo, 50 miles south of Toledo on Interstate 75. Mm -hmm. Nice town, old college town. What college is there? The University of Findlay. Oh, I, I, I don't think I've heard of that. <laughs> um, um, so were you still doing a lot of traveling out of there? Even more. Mm. Even more traveling. And, uh, and then Solomon purchased, uh, Solomon had all of its international operations in a separate company that was jointly owned by Solomon and the guy who ran that company. And Solomon bought him out and asked me if I would like to run international. Then the travel got intense. So I took that job and enjoyed, uh, it was one 12 month period I was on six of the seven continents. Okay. Wow. I was just gone all the time. But it was a different kind of travel because domestic travel was leave on a Sunday night and get back on Friday night. And uh, international travel was typically uh, ten days, so you would leave on a Monday and uh, come back a week later, spend the weekend abroad, and mm -hmm. come back a week later on the Friday. So uh, typically is how people did it. But I discovered another way to do it, and that is to take my wife with me. And um, we would change the nature of the business trip completely when we did that, because the people we were working with would involve their families because she mm -hmm. was, we were invited to people's homes and so on. And mm -hmm. I didn't just see hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. we, we were invited to people's homes. Their families were involved. We did things with them on the weekends. And that was really marvelous. And also, I didn't feel any hurry to get home. Mm -hmm. There was nobody waiting for me. She <laughs> was with me. Yeah, yeah. So that really became uh, a great way to do it. And I would typically go for months at a time. and we. You know, go up maybe three or four countries in a month um, in Europe. 
Did you make some uh, good friends uh, uh, that you met over there? Yes, we so have relationships made. around the world. And yeah. the one thing I miss about leaving uh, leaving that group, well, leaving Microsoft and retiring is that I don't see those people anymore. I used to, if I didn't see them in their country, they would be at attending the same conferences I was going to, and I would see them then. And now I don't see them hardly ever. Or occasionally. Mostly Europeans that you met? And Latin Americans, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got some great friends in Latin America. Yeah. Um, so, but it, Solomon, did they, you said they acquired Microsoft? No, no, they were acquired by Microsoft. They were acquired? They actually, they were okay. acquired by Great Plains. Their oh. nemesis acquired yeah. them. Okay. And um, then Microsoft acquired Great Plains. So, in oh. a spirit, Within a period of about 18 months, I wound up with three sets of business cards, <laughs> same address on them, different logos. <laughs> okay, so and so you were still living in uh, Finley. Oh, Finley. Yeah. Okay, and even when you started working for Microsoft, then. Yep. Okay, and doing the same, basically doing the same thing, it's just another name. Well, it, yeah, the um, basi basically doing the same thing. Um, How long had Microsoft been around by this time? And this was what year then? That was um, I left in two thousand and one, so we were probably acquired by Microsoft in ninety nine. Mm -hmm. I want to say All right. maybe two thousand. Okay. Um, and so, and then you retired from Microsoft. Yes. I and you were just there a, a year or two before you retired? Is that what you said? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I was in, still in Finley, Ohio at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, d what prompted your retirement? Um, I was in a position, thanks to the acquisition by Microsoft, that I was financially able to retire because the stock that I owned in the, those companies uh, was now Microsoft stock and it was liquid. Um, so that made it financially a possible to retire. And uh, then in uh, August of 2001, I had a heart attack. And though I dodged a bullet and zero heart muscle damage, um, I, it didn't uh, it made me think about retirement. Uh, so anyhow, um, I told my boss I was going to leave and he asked me to stay on board until a replacement was in place and so I had to help uh, help recruit and select and bring that guy on board and then once he was on board I took him around and introduced him to everybody in Latin America. You didn't have to have any procedures? I had a stent put in, stent. but I was, I was in Florida at the time that happened and staying in a hotel room. I got um, I got to the hospital very quickly. I think the heart attack actually happened in the emergency room after I was infused full of drugs to protect the heart, mm -hmm. and um, I dodged the bullet. Yes, you did. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're doing no problems since then. Still have a medical certificate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so you're retired now. Um, now Marie was. Traveling with you a lot, you said. Yes. Uh, was, did she also work too? No. No. Okay. Um, okay. So now you retire, and then what? Um, well, I went from my retirement luncheon to the airport and signed up for flying lessons without going home first. And uh, my first lesson was about six weeks later. Mm -hmm. And I took flying lessons, I soloed, bought an airplane and got my license in the <laughs> What did you solo in? Um, I soloed in a Cessna 150. Okay, and what was your first plane? Uh, Piper Archer PA-128. What uh, color was that? Blue and white. Did your, uh, did your wife like to go flying with you? Well, um, by that time I was uh, married again, <laughs> a third time, and um, 
No, she wasn't. She was very supportive of me doing it, but. Okay. No and so your something. third wife, what was her uh, first name? What was her, her name? first name was Karen. And, and uh, what was her maiden name? Uh, Nichols. Yeah. Karen Nichols. Uh, and where did you meet her? Yeah, at uh, where did I meet? I met her at work, one of the companies I was working for. Uh, Does she have children? No. Okay. Yeah. None at all. Uh, and um, she's the one that went to Europe with me. Oh, uh, okay. And Latin America and Australia. Oh, okay. so she did the traveling with you. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. And. And her father was a veteran of the United States Navy. Hmm. Was he in World War II? World War II. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was he on a ship, do you know? USS Santee, which was sunk in the battle, one of the battles in the Philippines. Yeah. I don't know if it was sunk or not, but it was certainly abandoned because it was on fire. Yeah, I, uh, I remember interviewing some guy, somebody that was on the Santee. Okay. It was, uh, was that it, were those jeep carriers? It was, it was what it called? It? it was an aircraft carrier. Yeah, small. They call them jeep carriers. Yeah, actually. a small, yeah. A small, small carrier. carrier. Yeah, that yeah. It was actually a, apparently, a, he told me it was a standard oil tanker that had been converted oh, to an yeah. aircraft carrier. i got to gotta look up and see who that was that I interviewed. I think he might have been a, might have been a Wildcat pilot, I think, okay. I think it seems to me. But yeah, well, no, this guy was Ship's it. Company. He uh -huh. was a uh, chief petty officer. Mm-hmm. Santee was hit. The executive officer grabbed him and said, Nichols, come with or Chief, come with me. We're, they had to go below and get the pay books before the ship sunk so they'd have a record of who was on the ship. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they showed you in the library. We have all the log books and everything of the, um, the Lexington, mm -hmm. uh, which was sunk at the Battle of the Coral Sea. Yeah. And one of the guys that we've interviewed, uh, Vince Anderson, he was a Marine gunner and survived it. And then he's put all this stuff together over the years and then donated it to us. So you have to look at it sometime if you haven't already. Yeah. That's important oh, well. stuff. Yeah, and uh, I enjoyed talking with him about it. And he started telling me things that the family had never heard about, um, about that incident, the yeah. sinking. And they, he was rescued, obviously, and along with a bunch of his shipmates, um, he was picked up by a destroyer. Mm -hmm. um, they were taken to some port and unloaded all the survivors, and then merged with some other survivors and put on a troop ship to go back to Pearl, and a Japanese submarine torpedoed the troop ship. Uh -huh. And he was back in the water again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oh. I think he'd had it. <clears throat> Golly, yeah, that's quite a story. But, um, so you, he, he and his wife are both buried in Arlington. Oh, they are. Yeah. Oh. The Air Force section. He entered the Air Force when it was oh. formed. Uh, oh, I see. He was a master chief, master sergeant in the Air Force. I called him chief. <laughs> <laughs> Big chief. <clears throat> um, so did flying come easy to you? Um. I, I, learning, learning something new at age 60, 61, is nothing easy about that, but I loved it. You know, if it was worthwhile, I wanted to do it. I got my pilot's license, I got an instrument rating. And, mm -hmm. um, um, was it easy? No, it was hard. It was hard, hard to do, hard to learn. It's serious mm -hmm. business. Have you kept it up? Oh yeah, I'm still current. Are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, when did you first start coming to the desert here on a regular basis? In um, my wife died in '07, mm -hmm. and in '08 I uh, uh, came down here in the winter time, January, mm -hmm. yeah. and. Uh, we, my, we had a condo up in Victoria, British Columbia, and I always thought it was stupid to have. We were living in Washington at the time. After we retired, we moved out to Washington. Oh, you did. Okay. 
I always thought it was stupid to have two properties in the same climate. <laughs> where, where in Washington were you there? Uh, Port Ludlow on the Olympic Peninsula. Flew out of uh, the Port Townsend Airport. Okay. And uh, so I came here, uh, oh, she died in 07, so I came here in 08, and I figured, hmm, what I'm going to do is sell the condo in Victoria and buy one in Palm Springs. And that was pretty easy to do. It was easy to sell that one and it was easy to buy one down here. The prices were good. And Where did you buy? Uh, first in, uh, the first place we had was in uh, this, uh, this Chino and Sunrise off the end of runway 31 left here. Uh, <coughs> And then uh, I met uh, a woman who uh, I dragged it down here to the desert, and she liked it as well. And we spent a lot of time in that condo, and then we got married and mm -hmm. bought a house in Indian Wells. Mm -hmm. So she had a she had a property in British Columbia. I had a, my property in Washington. So that was mine. That was hers. This house here is ours. We still got those places. But we rent them out. <laughs> okay. And what's her name? Cynthia. 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 What's, what's, uh, what was her maiden name? Uh, Campbell. And that's, she's still Campbell. She didn't change her name when she got married. Oh, okay. Um, and where did she grow up? She grew up in Montreal. Hmm. As an English-speaking person in Montreal. What did her father do? Um, I don't know. She's estranged from her father. He, oh. ab he abandoned the family and okay. uh, disappeared for 20 years. Oh. Did she go to college or what did she do? She, uh, yes, she put herself through college as a single mom. Uh, where was that? In Montreal. Uh, she went to Concordia University, graduated with a degree in English literature, hmm. uh, working as a waitress and a bartender. So, how many children does she have? She has one girl. And what's her name? Uh, Shona. Shona. That's a pretty, that's a pretty name. And where does she live? In Montreal, and they have two children. Oh, okay. So there's grandchildren there, too. Nice. And so, it's amazing. I had four girls, and she has a girl, so we have five daughters between us. <laughs> My wife and I have four daughters between us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, does um, what is what does she like to do? What what sort of activities does keeps her busy? These oh, days? she loves to travel. Um, that's one of her favorite things. We've traveled so much recently. We're just looking forward to staying home for a few months. Uh, we Going on cruises? No, no cruises yet. We went with another couple, rented a villa in Tuscany, and spent the whole month of October in oh. in Italy, the entire month in Italy. Yeah. Where do you live in Indian Wells? Uh, the corner, of, roughly the corner of Cook and uh, 111. In the development there called Los Lagos, a place with all mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah, I know. Pretends it isn't in the desert. Yeah, <laughs> I used to go out and play tennis with a guy out there years ago. Uh, there's some tennis courts there, I think, in Los Lagos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Merrill Lynch is right down there. Yes. That's mm -hmm. where I have my girl takes care of some of our stocks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when did you, uh, so you came here, so you've been living here in the desert about seven or eight years now, I guess? I got, uh, from yeah, 08 to uh, now. Still play golf? Uh, not much. Um, not much. It's. Um, Do you have a plane down here? I have a plane down here. I have a set of golf clubs too, but <laughs> the plane gets used more than golf clubs. What kind of plane do you have? Cirrus SR-22. It's a what? SR-22. Right. One with a parachute on it. It was in the news recently. Air right. Airframe parachute. Oh, it, do it does? Yeah. Yeah. What color is that? All white. Uh, yeah, all white. What year? How, uh, how 2006. Yeah. Um, where do you keep it here? Bermuda Dunes. I oh, hang yeah. Bermuda Dunes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh -huh. How often do you get up? 
Uh, not much recently, but I did, um, the last time I looked, I did a, I had done a 125, 130 hours in the previous 12 months, so. How far do you, do you do any traveling in it, or just kind of fly around here, or what? We have, uh, no, we, we like going cross country. And the reason we got the SR-22 is because it's faster, you know, 176 knots of true airspeed. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we bought it in South Carolina and flew it out here. Uh, the, the year before that, we uh, flew from the Seattle area out to Burlington, Vermont. So that's the kind of tri trips we like to make. Do you go to church uh, here? No. No. no, neither one of us. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when did you first come to the uh, Air Museum? Well, when I was living on the other side of the runway here at, at uh, that little condo, I came by the, a few times, uh, visited the runway, attended some of the Saturday afternoon events. Mm -hmm. Got, uh, I really liked, loved the museum. Great, great collection of aircraft growing all the time. By the way, uh, we go quite often down to Sacred Heart. It's uh, in Palm Desert on Deep Canyon, and, and you may know where it is. It's oh yeah, well, I know where, yeah, I know where Deep Canyon. Deep Canyon yeah. and uh, and right up Deep Canyon and Fred Waring. Yeah, uh, right okay. in the corner right. there. Anyway, uh, their priest, he's uh, he's got his name's Father Lincoln, and uh, he. He was an Anglican priest. He was married at one time with an Anglican priest, but he, 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 he's, we really like his sermons, and he's just kind of a, a guy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can relate to everything he says. So, you know, if you ever felt like you might want to just go in and check it out, uh, I would recommend that you do. It's certainly close enough. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So, but anyway, and you can, I think you would. Uh, you know, we always get something out of it when we go. So. Um, well, and so you just recently joined the museum. Yes, and I was having lunch at or breakfast at the Old Bold Pilots when I sat next to uh, Bill Bill Hughes. Is it? Bill, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that Hughes? Last Hughes. Time? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And um, was I, I got him talking about the museum, which wasn't hard to do. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> and he told me about the volunteer program, and I said I'd kind of like to do that. I could see myself talking. Talking about talking to people about airplanes because sure. I love talking about airplanes <laughs> and I love history. Yeah, well, yeah, the perfect mm -hmm. spot. Yeah, yeah. So. And uh, you know, we, of course, we still have some World War II veterans, and it's, yes, I that's when you know, because I, I joined here right when it first opened, so I've been around these guys. We've lost a lot on, on there, but that was, and it still is the best part. I mean, all the other stuff is great, but just. Being around these guys and talking to them, you know, it's 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 really really special. Yeah. Plus all the visitors that come in, you know, we still get some sure. World War II vets that come in and stuff like that. And uh, and the the Saturday programs, you know, there's always something interesting going on. And so yeah, you're in the right place, that's Good. for sure. <laughs> Good. Um, I guess we're about ready to wrap it up. Any parting thoughts? Um. No, I, I think not. I'm just I, I, my exposure to the museum so far is I really enjoy the people I've met so far. I had some great conversations, and like you said, I enjoy talking to the old guys. I call them old guys; they're older <laughs> than me. But um, you know, I, I met the guy who had flew 34 combat missions in the B-17 downstairs. And that's impressive. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, like I say, these are all his. We've done, oh, we're about 935 of these interviews that we've done. I started in the year 2000. And uh, so, and uh, of course, they probably showed you we've got them all along there. And most of them are, are World War II guys, you know. Yeah. And, uh, one of the guys was really a great guy, one of our volunteers. He was on B 17, was shot down on his, on his, I think, 11th mission over Berlin. And he was Jewish, you know, and, mm. and he spent like a, a year in the, and uh, it was, uh, his whole story was really fascinating. And uh, and he was saying, 
uh, he said, you know, when we're gone, there's, he, he was lamenting the fact that who's going to carry this place on when those guys are all gone. And I said, you're not going to be gone. He said, I've got your story right here. Yeah. It's right here. You'll, it'll, you'll always be here. You'll always be telling your story. And I've taken a lot of these and edited them down to like eight or ten minutes. And uh, I've, some of them I've got on YouTube. Some of them, you know, if somebody can just, rather than watching yeah. an hour and a half or two hour thing, I, you know, and add some music and pictures and things to it. And so, so it's the, those things are really neat, yeah. So it looks like by the five gold stars, you've been doing this for quite a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, I started, 96 is when the museum opened and I kind of joined pretty much early on and then kind of got into this. Were you a pilot? Or? No, no, just kind of like military history, yeah, you know, yeah. the main thing, yeah. yeah. yeah so, so it's just kind of a perfect thing for me. Um, I always ask someone like you, um, if you had any advice uh, for a young person, uh, maybe getting ready to get out of high school, they're trying to decide, and they don't really know what to do, should I go to college, should I get in the service, um, or maybe even a, a kid um, going into high school, you know, and um, that has an ROTC program, um, uh, you know, what might it be? Well, to any of them, I would say, um, stay in school. Uh, and don't ever stop learning. You might not realize it, but you don't know. You don't know everything, and you'll never have all the answers. So never stop learning. Um, and you know, follow your passion. Do what you want to do uh, in life, and make you know, find out what you have to do to qualify to do that, and get out and do it. Uh, the military is a great place to start. You learn all kinds of valuable job skills. I have, uh, though I wasn't able to serve, um, I've hired a lot of uh, military, uh, ex-military people and been very, very impressed with what they brought to the party and much of that they learned in the service. Patrick, I want to thank you for coming and... Uh, oh, sorry. I shouldn't be standing up, I guess. <laughs> oh, off yeah. camera. <laughs> Thanks for uh, coming and sharing with us. Thanks for... Um, uh, for joining the museum. I know you're going to love it here, and we're going to love having you here. Okay. Okay, buddy. Good. Thanks. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life, and I had to start again. Just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars To live in here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me, and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today, cause there ain't no doubt I love this land, God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say.
day Cause there ain't 